Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now in today's video, we're gonna be specifically looking at Ohm's law and how it applies to a brushless motor for us. Now the way that we're gonna go about this is we're gonna first look at a specific example, we're gonna run through all of the motor details, and then we're gonna look at exactly what Ohm's law represents and how it works for our specific example. And lastly, we're gonna answer the question, is Ohm's law broken? As you can tell from the title of this video and the title across the whiteboard there, this motor pulls a significant amount of current. And we're gonna understand exactly Exactly what this means and why. Let's get started by talking about those specific motor details that are written up on the board. Our motor for today is going to be a 1500 watt continuous rated motor. Now all of these specifications come right off of the motor manufacturer's spec sheet. The physical size for our motor drawn here on the diagram is a 40 millimeter diameter can by a 77 millimeter long can. Our internal resistance of the motor is going to be 0 0.002 ohms and the IO value for this specific motor is going to be 4.5 amps. Now I didn't specifically place the IO value up on the board here because we're going to use it in the video. The only reason I've put the IO value in there is because you get a good sense or idea as to the performance level of this specific motor. As soon as you see a high I.O. value, and this one being 4.5 amps, anywhere around 4.5 amps to about the 5.5 amp mark is quite significant. And if you see a very low amount of internal resistance, you know this motor can pull a significant amount of continuous current. Now one thing I need to bring your attention to is the specific KV of the motor. This is a 3300 KV motor. Now the reason why that's important is because most motors around the 28 to 40 millimeter diameter size is going to be limited to about 60,000 RPM maximum. Now if you take that 60,000 and you divide it by the 3300 KV, you get the voltage maximum of this specific motor. That works out to be about 18 volts, which tells Tells us that the only way this motor works is by using a 4S LiPo. A 5S LiPo would actually go above and beyond that 60,000 RPM and that is not acceptable. So in this case we are going to be looking at this motor using that 4S maximum and we'll be very close to that 60,000 RPM target for a maximum amount of total output RPM. Now let's take a look at exactly what Ohm's law represents. Ohm's law is defined by the formula V equals IR, and a lot of you are probably familiar with that or have seen that represented using different characters. V is equal to our voltage where I is our current and R is going to be the resistance. Now to get a good understanding as to how this formula works, what I like to do is imagine if you kept the resistance component here the same and you did two comparisons. So for that comparison, we can simply just say that R is equal to one, one ohm. And then we're just looking at what happens to the voltage and the current as we change that. But we're keeping that resistance the same for each case. If we drop the R from our formula, we essentially see that V is equal to I. What this allows us to do is see that as soon as we go and increase the amount of voltage, if voltage went from 10 to 15, we expect that I has to match that proportionally. So what that essentially allows us to do is say that the voltage and current are directly proportional in a linear relationship. Now let's take a look at our specific example and start plugging some numbers right into our formula. So the way that we do this is the voltage is going to be our nominal voltage of a 4S battery pack, VNOM 4S, is equal to I. I is going to be the current that we're actually trying to calculate. And then RM is the resistance of our motor. And that is the winding resistance of our motor if you were to measure any two of those three leads. When we go ahead, plug those values in, we get 14.8 is equal to I multiplied by that 0 0.002. And that is ohms in terms of our internal resistance of the motor. And then we go and rearrange this formula so that we get I on its own, I is equal to 7400. And all I did here is take 14.8, I move this to the other side by dividing it out, and I get that 7400 amp result. 
Now this is pretty much the time in the video where we pause and we think about this just for a quick second. 7,400 amps is a significant amount of current that we're talking about. The most current that I've ever worked with in my life has been around the 2,000 amp mark. 7,400 amps is a lot. Now let's try and understand exactly what this means for us. This is where we're gonna answer the question, is Ohm's law broken? Do you expect that this motor is going to be able to pull 7400 amps well certainly not if we're talking about using a 14 volt battery and our maximum amount of current is 1500 7400 multiplied by 14.8 is definitely not 1500 and it is significantly more times greater than that so that tells us something already now to really get a good understanding as to what's happening here we have to take a look at the diagram on the right hand side of the board this is a simple circuit that i've drawn up and it represents our 14.8 volt battery here located on the left side of the circuit. We have our speed control, which is acting as a switch within the circuit. Remember, this is a simple circuit. And then we have a resistor here, and then we also have our inductor on the right-hand side of this diagram. Now, if we're taking a look at this specific diagram, what I wanna do is actually draw a box around these two components, because these two components are the important components that both represent what is happening within our motor. So what we have within our motor is a resistor and we also have an inductor. Now if we take a look at V equals IR, we have voltage. Voltage is gonna be produced by our 14.8 volt battery. We have current flow because the switch is closed and we're running through a resistor. We're gonna be able to pass current around. And of course we have the resistor there as well. But the difference is we have this other component known as the inductor. And that is where things are a bit different. Now if we look at the first point here is that the inductor L is going to only happen if rotation of the motor is occurring. As long as that motor is not moving, there is no inductor within our circuit. That inductor only comes in when that motor is under mechanical movement and is rotating. What this tells us, if we want to look at V equals IR, and we know that the inductor is only there when the motor is rotating, let's assume that the motor is not rotating. Well, what happens is we essentially get rid of this inductor component within our circuit, and then we're left with the rest of this circuit, which means we have our battery pack, the speed control, as well as our resistor within the motor. Now, if you turn all the power on and you start applying full throttle, that means all that power is gonna go straight to that motor. Now, if that motor is fixed and cannot actually rotate, that's where you are going to actually draw that 7,400 amps. Now, if this actually happened with this specific motor where you held that shaft fixed and you applied 100% throttle at 14.8 volts, that motor will try to draw 7,400 amps. And I can guarantee you that something is going to go wrong. Nothing within this entire circuit is going to be able to handle that for probably more than a split second. So that is going to tell us that in this case, that's a big problem. Now that we understand exactly what happens when the motor is locked in position, let's talk about what happens when that motor is free to rotate as most motors are. When we have rotation, that's where we again introduce that inductance value into our circuit. And it's important to understand that because once that inductance value is here, you no longer just have that resistor. It's no longer just the 0.002 ohms that's affecting the entire circuit within the motor you now have this other component that's going to result in a resistance component as well. Now, essentially the way it works in simple terms is as soon as that motor begins to spin, let's say one RPM, we get an additional a bit of resistance. Now, the faster that you spin that motor right up to that maximum threshold on the motor, that resistance component is actually going to increase. This is why the maximum amount of current that we can pull from the motor when there is zero load, meaning it can spin as fast as that speed control and battery are going to be able to push it, is going to be that 4.5 amps. This is essentially the smallest amount of current that you're gonna see that motor run at. Any additional load on that motor is gonna to begin to slow that motor down and change the resistance component, and that's where we're gonna to start to see higher amounts of current being drawn. Now let's take a look at the last question that we have up on the board, and that is, where 
where exactly does Ohm's law apply within a radio controlled world? Well, the point that I have here up on the board is servos. If you imagine trying to use the steering on your car or a control surface on your airplane, and if that specific control surface or steering is not able to move, but you're trying to force it, you can enter what is known as a servo stall. And what's happening is that motor is trying to put out the maximum amount of effort but you're not letting that control surface move for whatever reason means that that current actually goes to its maximum because this relationship is happening. That locked rotor is exactly what we talked about and this is a case where motors generally do not respond well to being stalled like this. Tons and tons of heat build and this is the example that we're using. 7400 amps is going to produce a lot of heat in a split second and more than likely fry everything in this entire circuit. So this situation is definitely something you want to avoid, especially with the servos within our radio control components. This is a good idea to always oversize your servos so that you don't burn that motor out and risk stalling that servo. In addition to the safety of the actual servo itself and not overloading it, if you stall the servo, you are essentially giving up any amount of control that you would otherwise have. If you have a stalled control surface, that airplane is more than likely going to come down and fall out of the sky. You want to be certain that you're not overloading your servos and entering that stall condition. And to answer that last question we have up on the board, is Ohm's Law actually broken? The answer to that, of course, is no. Ohm's Law is not broken. It's telling us exactly what we expect to see. And this is, of course, where we can get into significant amounts of trouble. Let's try to avoid this with all types of motors that we use in RC. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, smash that like button for me. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.